Fresh is the same kind of beast as BetterHelp. So I'm gonna try to make sure I say in my opinion and allegedly a lot and I'm gonna make sure that after this video is posted, if anything happens and I need to cut something, I need to blur something, this is my disclaimer. There has to be some reason why a lot of people don't know how <laughs> rotten HelloFresh is because there are numerous articles about the details of HelloFresh's corruption in my opinion. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. <laughs> Imagine, what would y'all do? First of all, you know, this video would never be approved if they saw this was gonna be the video. But <laughs> I feel like people would be like, slay sis, get your coin like no accountability is gonna happen that would be people would have to like drag me a bit i mean i would hope at the end of the day it's all thanks to hello fresh hello fresh makes it so easy to get a home cooked meal on the table without compromising any of your health goals i mean they're bound to be a hit whether you're just cooking for your family or maybe you're having like some sort of gathering you're having people over this is gonna wow say thank you to today's sponsor which is HelloFresh. I'm sure by now, if you watch my channel, you guys know who HelloFresh is, but if you don't, they are a meal delivery service. They have a lot of different flavors and combinations and meals that I don't necessarily even think to make in my typical life. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that offers you fresh, delicious, and healthy meals delivered straight to the comfort of your own home. Pre-portioned, pre-thought out, easy to follow recipe cards that allow you to get your meal on the table in about 30 minutes, sometimes less than that. If you guys don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is a meal kit service. You already know if you watch me, you know they send you fresh groceries right to your door every week or bi-weekly you can set it however you want they i was about to lose my mind until i heard of today's sponsor hellofresh to put it as simple as possible hellofresh is ingredients in bags in a box that gets shipped to your house I'll have you know that i've cooked like 300 hellofresh meals over the past four years so i think i know what i'm talking about many of us know about hellofresh because of the influencer marketing and we also know about them because they're ridiculous coupons wait a second i made sure to keep one by the time we recorded there has been so many hellofresh coupons that I have received over the years. This one says, come back <laughs> and we'll get to it. I've received packages where at the bottom of the package, there's literally three of these. So those are the two ways I think most people know about HelloFresh. And of course they have like overlay ads on YouTube. You'll see it scrolling on TikTok. They have ads everywhere. I don't know if they have like traditional cable commercial ads though. But I'm always surprised that when I do videos about really popular things like this or things I think is popular, a lot of people do not know about the brand that much. So who or what is HelloFresh? We all love food, but the tedious process of grocery store shopping and then cooking, not so much. That's where HelloFresh comes in, a company that sends fresh produce and ingredients along with recipes to subscribers' doorsteps, cutting out the need for at least the grocery shopping part. Despite how well known it has become in the food subscription space, the Berlin, Germany headquartered company HelloFresh was not the first of its kind when it launched in 2011. In fact, its predecessor was launched four years before in Stockholm, Sweden. Since then, a handful of other meal subscription-based services, including Blue Apron and Plated, have come to life that have further fueled interest in this meal kit model, especially in America. But HelloFresh remains dominant in the marketplace, especially within the pandemic, with people stuck at home. The company customer base is up 46% in the United States in 2021, with $2.5 billion in sales last year, a 102% increase over the same time a year ago. HelloFresh was founded and is currently headquartered in Berlin, Germany as a creation of Germany's Rocket Internet, which is known for investing in startups and owning shareholdings of various models of business. With capital funding, HelloFresh was quickly able to bootstrap its way into the food industry and was able to get into markets across Europe, Australia, and the United States in a short period of time. Not too long ago, HelloFresh had a wine box subscription too that came in three varieties, the summer, the red wine, and the white wine plan. According to meal delivery experts, this is no longer available. Since HelloFresh was founded in 20 2011, they own Green Chef, Every Plate, and Chef's Plate, and all of them are still slightly unique. 
Green Chef is a healthy branch of the HelloFresh brand. Every plate is a bit cheaper. And then Chef Plate is based in Toronto to serve those in Canada. I did try HelloFresh myself. This is still an ongoing journey for me, figuring out how to spend less than a certain amount of money a month in order to feed myself and eat food that I enjoy every single day. It's very difficult and I thought HelloFresh could be something that helped. I think I wanna say I tried it for at least two boxes before I canceled it because the coupon is basically spread out. <laughs> they technically give you whatever 100 plus dollars that is on that coupon, but then they spread it out. So you go on HelloFresh.com, you type in that coupon, they will give you $50 off your first box, $40 off your next box, and then $10 off and then $5. So when I first saw that, that was a little annoying. I thought I was gonna be getting a couple of free boxes before I've ever had to pay for it. They do that, then they have some options for you. I'm not a fan of mushrooms. They had a lot of that in there. I just wasn't a fan of some of the options that they had and the ones that I did get, they were good, but they did not feed me that long like i would keep trying to find like do they have bigger serving size for more people because they will give you a serving size for like what two to four people or something i'm like do you got eight to ten because i don't understand how this is supposed to be enough food they tasted good i would give all of them like an eight out of ten it did technically introduce me to some new stuff i never recreated any of the meals after and then you still have to figure out breakfast and lunch and then dinner the next day and then of course they give you i think like four meals so that's like kind of four dinners covered but that's it the only way you would have breakfast lunch and dinner covered by hellofresh you would need to order at least three boxes a week or something like it's definitely something for people who are making at least 80k to 100k annually and are looking for something that can diversify what they're cooking that month. It's not affordable at all. 16 free meals. 16 free meals. For 16 free meals. For 16 free meals. For up to 16 free meals spread across seven boxes. Meal kits are marketed as a way for people to cook more and spend less on groceries or eating out. The truth is that an average minimum of $10 per person, the service may be convenient, but not necessarily cheaper than buying groceries. While this price might be smaller to or less than what you'd pay eating out, you still have to consider the associated cost. Detroit Free Press points out that dinners delivered in these meal kits don't generally yield leftovers, which means you need to buy additional groceries to make your breakfast, lunch, and other food during the day. If you calculate the cost of the meals for more than one person per household, plus the money you still have to spend at the supermarket, the subscription doesn't sound as affordable as you probably thought. So let's talk a little bit about the expensive prices of food that we have experienced. Everyone is affected by the rising cost of grocery prices, including the corporations raking in billions while families struggle to eat. Two years ago, a gallon of milk averaged $3.74. Today, shoppers can expect to pay $4.21. A loaf of white bread was previously $1.53, is now $1.87. And a dozen of eggs cost upwards of three or more dollars. I know many of us were seeing $8 for eggs. Rising food costs on staple items have meant that people experiencing food insecurity, which is 33.8 million people in America, are left to choose what to buy and what meals to skip. And all of this has been happening because of inflation. Prices rise over the years, but they have been rising worldwide during this public health emergency. And surprisingly, something I didn't know, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine has caused delays in global production. But there's another factor, and that is corporate profits. Corporations have three options when it comes to rising costs. Most inflation is from corporate profit margins as determined by CEOs. Many of us have heard that companies are saying they need to raise prices to pay their workers, but a lot of these CEOs are actually pocketing the money, whether it's for in the food industry or the entertainment industry. If there's anything that you're looking to do for this, you can donate to local food banks or you can start one in your neighborhood. There have been many community kitchens and overall just supporting programs that distribute a surplus of food to people who are insecure. And let me know if you want me to talk about places like Imperfect Foods because they sometimes disrupt initiatives like this. 
Now we are going to get to why I'm alluding to HelloFresh being so bad, in my opinion. They do a good job of making things look good and almost co-opting meaningful things and ruining its reputation, like making creators aid their, in my opinion, exploitation of marginalized groups and degradation of the planet. Probably a big target audience of these various food subscription boxes cares about sustainability. These brands make it a point to figure out how to include sustainability efforts that, given some common sense, should be debunked, and these articles explain that. As HelloFresh is now available in 14 countries, including the United States, of course where it sources its produce and animal products differ by country in order to provide customers with the freshest ingredients. On its United States website, the company fully divulges its suppliers as well as its promise to sustainability and quality. In 2015, BuzzFeed published a fascinating story about the exorbitant amount of waste caused by the meal kit industry, but more specifically, Blue Apron. Sure, they're throwing away less food by using pre-portioned ingredients, but consider that every single one of those ingredients arrives in its own separate cardboard or plastic container from a single carrot down to a teaspoon of curry. The author discovered that three meals for two people amounted to a whole lot of damage to the environment. But looking into this, I learned just how bad, in my opinion, HelloFresh is. Another article covers, HelloFresh workers allege the popular meal kit delivery company has retaliated against them for their recent unionization campaigning in a report by The Guardian published Thursday, which comes amid coverage of unsafe and brutal working conditions on the company's assembly lines. The allegations include a worker from HelloFresh's Richmond, California location who told The Guardian that security guards tried to take their employee badge for distributing pro-union leaflets outside during her lunch break. Two other workers said they were also told by managers that they weren't allowed to share union leaflets outside their lunch break. One of them told The Guardian that he was later demoted because he was told he did not speak English well enough, but said he believed it was camouflage because he had been exercising his organizing right. One day I was running the production line and my team lead was yelling at me, telling me to do so many things at once I couldn't do, and while yelling at me, called me a Mexican SHIT. Evelyn Escobar, a production line worker at the Richmond plant, told The Guardian. Organizers launched the effort earlier this year to advocate for better pay and working conditions after a pallet of meal kit supplies fell from a shelf and struck several workers. One was seriously injured. One of our co-workers, she fell on an empty pallet. She tripped on it and her feet got tangled on the plastic that was in it and she broke her arm. I was present uh, the day one of my fellow co-workers got her foot crushed by a 300 pound pallet and I remember seeing the pain in her eyes. I have a friend at work who told me about her injury. She broke her leg when, you know, while she was working. She slipped over like a piece of a poblana pepper on the floor, right, which is pretty common in, in, in that area. I want HelloFresh customers to know that everything that they're getting at their doors, like these boxes, we are the workers that make this possible and we haven't been treated fairly. We don't feel like we're provided a safe and organized work environment to conduct our daily assignments, and we don't feel like we get the dignity and respect that we deserve. My biggest safety concern at work is that there are so many things on the floor. It can be also water, uh, empty pallets with plastic on, and sticks sticking out of the pallet, which makes it very dangerous for everybody. And it's not a safe place to be working in. We put ourselves in harm's way for the company and whenever we do su sustain injuries, they, 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 they remove accountability and place it directly on the employees and the associates. They'll go into the bathroom or into the break room to kind of, you know, look for people or I guess encourage people to hurry back and get back to the production area. But, you know, if you got to use the bathroom, you got to use the bathroom. HelloFresh has done like every trick in the book when it comes to like shallow, meaningless, baseless statements in regards to the allegation against them and about how they are acting like they support their workers. The pro-labor site More Perfect Union tweeted Monday that HelloFresh filed a takedown notice for a video alleging the company's union busting efforts, which had it wrongfully removed from Twitter. A HelloFresh spokesperson said that the request for removal was due to a blatant copyright violation of HelloFresh's content that has since been remedied in the new version, but that the video includes misinformation and mischaracterization about the HelloFresh employee experience. 
We take these allegations very seriously and all such complaints are vigorously investigated and addressed, a HelloFresh spokesperson shared in a statement to Forbes. HelloFresh believes that the decision of whether or not to be represented by a union is an important one and we respect each employee's right to choose or refuse union membership. To promote further education and create open dialogue, we're holding an in-person meeting so that employees can be fully informed and make the best decision for themselves and their families. One thing I was surprised by were all the articles that were titled HelloFresh Workers Vote Against Unionizing. I was a little worried to read them because I thought that I was going to be basically reading how HelloFresh workers also just ultimately didn't agree with unions. I thought they were going to be separate from each other for some reason. You know, I think a union is worth having. I feel like sometimes unionizing can come from like a reactionary way and instead of like a preventative measure before any issues even start. I also think I'm someone who would love to be a part of a union. I would love for content creators to be able to collectively bargain and strike when needed. Um, but there are a lot of professions and industries where we're just not there yet and we are being exploited every single day because obviously we see people rather exploit even if they lose more money exploiting than they would if they just paid people better. HelloFresh has paid anti-union firm Culture Consulting thousands of dollars for its work at the California and Colorado facilities. The developments come amid an increase in union efforts that have swept the country, including at major companies such as Amazon, Starbucks, Dollar General, and beyond. Last year, HelloFresh workers in the U.S. attempted to form workers' unions at two warehouse locations in California and Colorado, respectively. Union membership rates have been steadily declining across the U.S. for the past 60 years. Workers in favor of unionizing complained about misinformation and retaliation coming from their managers. HelloFresh hired Culture Consulting during this time, reportedly paying several consultants $3,500 per day. In both cases, workers ultimately voted against unionizing. HelloFresh purchased its Aurora facility when it acquired rival Green Chef in 2018. Since then, it has doubled its Aurora staff to roughly 400 forklift operators, chefs, and assembly line workers. Aurora workers voted almost two to one against organizing in an election that wrapped up on Monday. The National Labor Relations Board confirmed the final vote tally was 166 to 91. HelloFresh workers in Aurora fell short in their vote after a long anti-union campaign. A union organizer said, Our hearts go out to the workers who organized the union because they wanted to change the disrespect, dangerous working conditions, and pay in their workplace. Like many companies, HelloFresh maintained a website that discouraged workers from voting for the union. The website My HelloFresh Voice told workers they could be permanently replaced if they went on strike, and it included a calculator that showed them how much they could earn if they invested their dues rather than paying the union $59.60 per month. During the election, employees received a text message from HelloFresh about a wage raise, which would amount to a dollar extra an hour. One of the workers is quoted saying it would have made a lot of a difference because that worker was currently making $18.86 an hour. But the raise never appeared, and when the worker brought it to HR, the representative said that that current worker was already making the maximum rate. This quote goes on to say that it benefits HelloFresh to violate labor laws. They could fire someone, and that person could file a fair labor practice claim later, but what does that do for someone who needs their paycheck this week? The consultants HelloFresh hired and management have tried to characterize unions as a business, comparing union organizers to sales representatives who will trick workers into joining a union. This tweet was possibly taken by a HelloFresh worker to show the anti-union content that Culture Consulting is presenting. In 2019, the consulting firm was receiving about $2,625 a day for their work. The recent setbacks for labor organizers reflect the difficulty of convincing workers who are paid low wages and have minimal employment protections that the benefits of a collective bargaining are worth the financial costs and the risk of losing employment at companies aggressively pushing against unionizing. It's hard for all workers to organize, but it's especially hard for the more vulnerable workers to organize, said Rebecca Guyvin. 
a labor studies professor at Rutgers. Campaigns of intimidation can be very successful because these workers know that they are living a precarious life. It really helps employers that take advantage of employees when the employees feel fortunate to have a job instead of feeling they have the right to demand more. At HelloFresh, which is what's called a second chance employer, some employees have criminal convictions on their records, which bars them from a range of other jobs, including driving for Lyft or Uber. Others are immigrants with limited English speaking skills all face one of the most severe housing shortages in the country. A quarter of Bay Area residents do not make enough money to make ends meet. Being anti-union is bad, having workers injured on the job is bad, and we are adding being extremely careless during the initial awareness of a life-altering virus hitting the United States. The way a benevolent branded brand like HelloFresh is just effortlessly disgusting behind the scenes is really a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type of capitalistic trope that I just is so unsettling. In summer of 2020, the Richmond facility just north of Oakland was the site of the largest COVID-19 outbreak in one of the state's most populous counties. A wave that infected 171 workers at one warehouse. After an employee who worked at the facility died of COVID, state health and safety officials opened an investigation and in April 2021, charged the company with a serious violation. An executive said that they were proud that the facility had the largest number of COVID-19 cases in Contra Costa County because that demonstrated the success of their COVID-19 testing program. When health inspector Heather Sidomas went out to investigate the Richmond facility in July of 2020, the company said it had 26 virus cases in its workplace, but county records showed at least 56 cases among HelloFresh employees in the facility. While HelloFresh was cooperative, their COVID protocols were not satisfying. People were grouped by doorways and eating together in a crowded break room. The plexiglass barriers meant to reduce exposure between people working side by side were hung too high to be effective, and employees weren't properly wearing their masks. The public health department told HelloFresh that they had to take immediate actions, including reducing the on-site workforce by 40% within the next two days and testing all employees within the next nine days. By then, Wilfredo Alvarez, a 64-year-old HelloFresh employee who had been working on the production line in Richmond for three years, had been hospitalized for the virus for over a week. His children kept in touch with their dad's employer through text messages that BuzzFeed received in various documents that were submitted to California Division of Occupational Safety and Health. The family updated the company on which hospital he was in and kept them abreast of his condition. William, one of Alvarez's sons, told state health and safety officials that he had also informed the company of his dad's positive virus diagnosis. And text messages show that his son also told them that he ended up getting the virus himself. Then HelloFresh's US head of corporate safety and security, Mitchell Jacobs, told state officials that according to information provided to him by human resources, after Alvarez was hospitalized, the company didn't hear about his condition again until the county health department called to inform the company of Alvarez's death. But text messages show that that is not true. There's proof that Alvarez's son was updating HelloFresh representatives about his dad's condition. He was saying that he was hoping for a miracle and looking for funeral homes. Later that night, Alvarez died alone in an intensive unit in Vacaville, California. Alvarez's son texted a HelloFresh employee saying, my dad didn't make it. A HelloFresh employee responded, oh my goodness, no, I'm so, so sorry. When Cedar Maz heard about Alvarez's death, she instructed the company to report the fatality to the state, which it did 12 days after his death. The accident report stated that HelloFresh was unsure of the cause of death and had no knowledge as to if Alvarez was positive for COVID-19 or not. So this is one of the reasons why I feel like HelloFresh is extremely grimy. Someone dies allegedly because of your working conditions and you allegedly are aware of that and this is how you report their death. So I am doing my research. I think I found like where people who have been employed by HelloFresh can go in and kind of review their experience. And of course, with the information that you know about them paying all this money for a consultant um, to union bust, you have to take these reviews that are public on the internet with a grain of salt, similar to Trustpilot. Like there have been companies that are in some type of lawsuits for muddling with their public reviews or public facing reviews, suppressing negative ones. But this is the thing with HelloFresh, like many companies, even like Uber, 
they are going to have the people who are on the ground doing the day-to-day -day for their company those are going to be low-income people who are not getting paid well and are going to typically have negative experiences then you have people who work on like the more corporate side they do the marketing they do the communications they do the tech these people are typically going to have a better experience like a three to five star experience that are just like management sucked some time the work was a little boring and repetitive but overall it was a good experience made a decent amount of money then you're going to have the two to one stars from the people who did the day-to-day -day packaging of whatever it is driving the cars whatever that are going to have those negative reviews sometimes those are suppressed so that's typically what you see when looking at like okay what are other workers even saying publicly and this is my thing like it gets worse because HelloFresh in my opinion is systemically putting things in place that do not allow workers to have a word at all it's extremely intentional I do not know why in my opinion they hate workers so much HelloFresh has operations in 14 other countries, including the United States, UK, and Australia, and employs over 11,800 people worldwide. The company went public and joined the Frankfurt Stock Exchange at the end of 2021. According to the firm's second quarter report for 2022, it has reached an all-time quarterly high valuation of approximately 1.6 billion in UK money and has 8 million active customers. And then in the year 2022, the company experienced 62% worth of growth. In Germany, HelloFresh is the only DAX listed company that doesn't have a works council. It is also one of three firms that doesn't have workers representation on their supervisory board. Okay, I wanted to slow this down a bit so basically HelloFresh has purposely changed the type of company that they are so that workers cannot be represented at all when you are an SE which is a European company you can avoid co-determination protections and I think they get around not being an AG like a standard stock corporation maybe because domestically in Germany they don't have 500 employees and they have more than 500 employees everywhere else internationally I don't know that's how I'm interpreting it but if they were a standard AG they would have to like legally have supervisory boards with employee representatives and it's already been documented that they are preventing employees from being represented at the supervisory level, which is aiding in the lack of change the company is making in order to make workers have a more just experience on the job. A representative speaking for HelloFresh said the company decided to restructure because the legal form of an SE does more appropriately reflect the international orientation of HelloFresh and its subsidiaries. HelloFresh employees in favor of starting a works council will take their case to Berlin's court on November 15th. This was at least a year or two ago. Workers involved in this case say the meal kit delivery service has spread misinformation and engaged in other union busting tactics. The company has denied these claims in a statement provided to DW saying, we greatly value participation and co-determination in our workplace. Franziska Faulong, union secretary at Verdi, supports the workers' efforts to form a council. She told DW that HelloFresh was particularly good at union busting. Not even Amazon is that bad, she added. There are a few reasons why I find HelloFresh to be particularly dystopian the same way as BetterHelp. I feel like they're trying to monopolize on basic needs with, in my opinion, misleading advertisement and the kind of good representation you get from like cute Canva branding. You know a lot of us YouTubers love this phrasing, but I feel like the Canva-ification, the Canva-ification of the downfall of society, the canvaification of late stage capitalism. Of course, HelloFresh is probably not doing their branding using Canva, but if you wanted to mimic HelloFresh's branding and a lot of the branding that companies are using to appeal to Gen Z and millennials, it's that kind of look. We are gonna end with tying this into how does this matter to when we see HelloFresh sponsoring people on YouTube. So bear with me because we're gonna get a little financial. And then we have the YouTubers. Now, even if you have YouTube Premium, when you click a YouTube video and a content creator has a sponsor in the video, many of them are sponsored by HelloFresh. Now, I don't think HelloFresh is just sponsoring anybody. Typically, these YouTubers get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views when they cut to their kitchen from their video to talk about HelloFresh. HelloFresh garners like a lot of positive sentiments from moms, people who work a lot. Everybody who does a HelloFresh ad is like, look, I don't have the time to cook. Here are some 
really tasty meals that take this amount of time to make. And here is a huge discount if you would like to try it. And many of the people sponsored by HelloFresh are not really that problematic. Of course, you can be critical of their content. If I had the time, I would do an analysis on like everybody's channel that has ever made a YouTube video. I've never been reached out to HelloFresh for a sponsorship. I was reached out to by Green Chef and I immediately declined because I was aware that they are owned by HelloFresh and I told the person who emailed me, I was like, HelloFresh be union busting, no thanks. They said, that's fair. So honestly, before this video, I just knew that HelloFresh was union busting. I would see like headlines of articles, but I never really looked past that. I was like, I saw that headline and basically was like, that's enough for me to not consider being sponsored by them or to buy from them again. Doing the research for this video was a little infuriating because I almost, I feel like this unrealistic expectation or this idealistic expectation was bubbling up because I was just so furious. Like I was like, if anyone who's ever been sponsored by HelloFresh saw this information, they immediately, once their contract is up with HelloFresh, need to denounce the company publicly. And like everyone who is sponsored by HelloFresh should see comments saying, do you know this brand is like horrific and intentionally doing all it can, in my opinion, to exploit workers. I understand people are gonna do problematic sponsorships because they need to make money to survive. And I honestly feel like that can be challenged to an extent because though people's finances are kind of private, I think some people use that language as a cop out for accountability and making sacrifices that put them in solidarity with other human beings. Okay, because of what I just said could be controversial, I'm gonna have to give you this janky looking slide in order to really kind of break this down in a succinct way. I think there are so many disingenuous comments that can come from pocket watching, if you wanna say. So let's be very, very clear. Content creators mostly are low income. There are very few content creators who are actually making over 80K to 100K or more given what their family size needs in order to not be considered low income. So when you hear and see a lot of content creator lifestyles, either people are lying or in debt or they are the outliers making a lot of money. Um, again, even if a content creator wants to brag about signing a 10K deal, if they only sign one or two in a year and they don't have any other forms of revenue, that is poverty still. So do not let any of those things make you believe that this profession is a dream financially. On Patreon specifically, I am very transparent about how much I make because I am not one of those people that believe finances need to be a secret. I think they only need to be private for safety reasons and that's about it. There really isn't any other logical reasons why you have to keep your finances private. I believe keeping your finances private across the board is a manipulative way to divide the working class and it is not a common sense ideology. It is one that has been forced on us. That's about it. I am low income. I can't fully say that my channel is what a low income content creator channel looks like, meaning if someone gets the views and subscribers that I have, they are probably low income because I probably could make about 10 to 20K more a year for my platform, debatably. But because I have certain disability needs that I won't disclose here, a low income salary is just about all I can manage to make. But at the same time, I do believe that people who have a channel with similar views and subscribers as mine are also low income, especially if you do not have any kids, looking low income is a little different. I also wanted to add this for those who have no idea what the back end of a YouTube channel is like. Channels that have like a decent amount of views and subscribers but don't post that often will ultimately make less than those who post often but get similar engagement. So that's how things also fluctuate for some people. But I do want to bring to your attention that when you are a content creator, and even if you make a little bit more than 50K a year, that doesn't always mean you're um, financially comfortable because you could be paying for things like health insurance that can run you 6K to 12K annually. So if you're a content creator and you're bringing in $50,000 a year, if you are paying for certain benefits that uh, someone who's traditionally employed with 50K makes, that significantly cuts into your money. So I will say that even high earning content creators do have to pay a large amount for certain benefits that they don't get at a traditional job. But that brings me back to this conversation is about HelloFresh or brands like HelloFresh that typically sponsor creators who are not pressed for cash unless they have some outlier issues 
like retail addictions or probably have a sick family member or a lot of family members to take care of, there are going to be some reasons why there's a content creator who is making over $100,000 a year and needs to take a HelloFresh sponsorship because if they don't, they won't be able to pay for their health insurance annually or something, you know? But back to the point, HelloFresh rarely sponsors creators who do not get a significant amount of views, which also means you can conclude those creators also make more than a low income on AdSense alone, and sponsorships may be covering way more than their basic needs. You know, I don't really want to speak in absolute, so I'm sure HelloFresh does sponsor smaller creators that have less than a couple hundred thousand views, but I just haven't seen it. So now it goes to my main point. If creators want grace when accepting problematic sponsors, it is not enough to say they are just trying to survive because you then have to answer is your survival priority over people experiencing more immediate needs. It is not ridiculous to ask creators who may be rich to adjust their budget when made aware they can no longer benefit from a sponsor. I deeply believe that there are some, especially content creators, who can make certain life adjustments that could radically change what other people, especially other workers, are experiencing, of course, if done collectively, because that's the nuance here. I think like if even if some creators like in this video stop working with HelloFresh, if they don't publicly say something, and then if there isn't also some collective action that happens, not, you know, all that responsibility is on one person, but if collective action then also happens to make sure rarely if anyone is sponsored by HelloFresh or even places like BetterHelp, then the change will come. And this is just why I'm saying what I'm saying. I think we rarely get this aspect fleshed out because people immediately get weird when talking about money. The reason why we're talking about the money should be bigger. Like, I believe that everything that we just learned about what HelloFresh is doing is a reason to make certain sacrifices in order to help stand with those people experiencing those things. I mean, if you, even if you look at the writer strike, there are a bunch of people who are going without a lot in order to get their needs down the line. And I also think if any content creator is feeling like they need to be sponsored by brands that have well-documented problematic track records, it goes to how unsustainable and exploitative this job is, and they need to say that as well if they're ever talking about taking problematic sponsors. And if you are a creator that doesn't wanna be low income and you wanna make 80K to 100K, the amount of things you need on your side to make that possible is something a lot of people just are not being transparent about. I just wanted to put that out there because in my opinion, HelloFresh, their marketing, their consumer awareness, brand awareness, I don't even know. I feel like they get it from a lot of content creators, especially YouTubers, people who can show video of them using the subscription service. And the amount of money that they spend on advertisements signals that they really want to take up space and want to become the option for people. Similar to better help with therapy, if we become popular enough, we will squeeze out all the competition, own all the competition, and this will be the default way people receive food. And of course, to make people better like workhorses. It's so interesting that like the productivity is never questioned before people are figuring out how can I spend my money that will give me more time to work or when I'm not working, I can spend my money so that I don't feel like I don't have enough time to relax, to decompress. You know, keeping meals fun and nice, like that takes a lot of time. But I don't even know how I could describe it. Like I'm waiting for a company to come out with like subscription-based oxygen, you know, something. I can see why if you're gonna be sponsored by HelloFresh, you don't type in like, cause when you are getting sponsored, you should type in the company and bad reviews. Like literally, HelloFresh, bad reviews, HelloFresh, bad. Type it to see what you get. I feel like people don't do that because so many people get sponsored by them. They're like, if everybody's getting sponsored by them, like I don't even have to do my due diligence, but like, and it's like the title, like the company name, it's all ironic and it's all so evil to me. Like. It's like you purposely named something HelloFresh with this happy-go-lucky branding. So that's pretty much it. I don't know why you're here. But yeah, that's all for me. If you want me to continue to talk about these boxes, let me know and I will. And thank you for watching.